Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy with another special guest on the gratitude interview pandemic uh, process or gratitude podcast, rather, I should say, in the interview for regarding the pandemic. And today I was thinking about my guest today that uh, one of those people I've known a long, long time when he was just a little whippersnapper. And he's turned out to be such a fine young man. Of course, he'll always be a young man to me because I'm about 50 years older than he is. But anyway, Trevor Olson is my guest today. Trevor, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Dave. Thank you. And you're not that much older than me. You're older, but not that much. <laughs> yeah, or as I always like to say, older, but never old. The di big difference between being old and being older. I'm older. I, I mean, the number you throw out is like that fish story. The fish keeps getting yeah, bigger just, and bigger and bigger. It just keeps getting bigger. That's true. So, so let me start you off with a question. I didn't tell you as much as I did some people about the whole purpose of these podcasts. I call them podcast interview is it get some maybe tips and thoughts and things and people that I know that are pretty dynamic people and that may help some people that are uh, housebound, as I say, from time to time. So my first question to you is, what has been your best coping mechanism to deal with this pandemic? Um, probably not focusing on it. Mm, I like that. I mean, I've gone through and looked at things and looked at everything, but for the most part, for me, my life hasn't changed a ton because I've always worked from home. Mm -hmm. So you get everybody that's trying to go through all the nuances of trying to figure out how to work from home. I've always done that. And my job's moved forward. I haven't had, knock on wood, haven't had any layoffs or salary reductions or anything. So I, I probably the best thing that I've done to cope with everything is just, you know what, just keep moving forward and, and not really focus on it. Just, yeah. I mean... I know we're going to get through it, and it. What is the saying? This this should this too shall pass. I mean, it's all we're all going to get through get through it. It's just a matter, and and granted, everybody's in different phases. Where I just am fortunate enough to be financially set and and not have to worry about it and still be employed. So, yeah. oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. And when you think about my whole subject is that gratitude guy is gratitude and focusing on what you have versus what you don't have. And did you notice we're in about our sixth or seventh week of this now? Did you notice if what you're grateful for changed from where before this started to what you're grateful for now? Has that shifted at all? Um, I would say it has in some ways. I mean, I, I'm, I'm grateful for the amount of time we're getting to spend as a family. Oh yeah. I mean, there, there's a lot of things. My son's five and, and, wow. and I don't think, I mean, he learned how to ride a bike about three weeks ago. Oh, and, great. and honestly, I don't think had this happened, it would have happened as early. Oh, I don't, that's th nice. I don't think what that would have happened. And so we've been out on bike rides every single day and, and literally family dinners every night and sitting down and hanging out. So it's, it's been, it's been good. I mean, and, that, that all is, some of that stuff has happened, but it probably wouldn't have happened had this not happened. That's really interesting too, kind of the return of uh, family dinner. I did a video, I do a lot of videos, and I did one on the 10 point gratitude perspective on the coronavirus. And, and one of them was having dinner together and even look at the technology we have today. You and I look like we're sitting, we're as close to being across a cup of coffee at uh, Starbucks and it feels like you're just two feet away from me. And so there's just a lot of silver linings. And I think I've heard a lot of people talk about reconnecting and so forth. So, so another question is being the kind of guy that's always been, I look at uh, you and your brother and just knowing your family as well as I do from Bob and Pam on down to you and, and Tyler and so forth is always having a lot going on. And so do you have any sort of thoughts or tips or ideas or how somebody may best take advantage of this time where they're stuck in their condo or townhouse or home or what they might do that uh, might be productive or whatever during this time? I mean, one of the things that I've seen out there and signed up for a few things, but haven't done them as religiously or as well as I should have, but um, like Fender has Fender Play and they're offering it free for 90 days. So learn how to play an instrument. Oh, wow. Or even there's learn a language. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do. Like, mm. I mean, I think from an educational standpoint, you'll see who's really kind of taking this time to really use it effectively if they could and like learn something new. Because I mean, there's, there's a lot of things you can do. I mean, you can only spend so much time on Facebook and Instagram. Exactly. Exactly. Look at looking to see what everybody else is doing inside. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like that. I think 
somehow that's so much better learning, educating yourself, getting, learning a new skill, whatever, versus binge watching some shows or whatever for hours on ends. I don't, I don't know if I quite understand that, but, but so even though Trev, you mentioned that you work out of your home uh, and so it hasn't impacted you maybe as much as some people, this is going to officially end at some point with a vaccine or getting back in place and people will get back where it'll be kind of behind us, I guess. Yeah. Is there anything you're thinking about now that when I, when this is through, I'm going to hit the ground running doing this. Has it, has it given you some time to think about here's some things I'm going to do when this is done or, or that maybe I'm going to do differently when it's over? Um, I mean, I think we'll probably keep a lot of things that we've started in the pandemic, like, having the family dinners every night and, and doing a lot of the outdoor activities. Mm. We'll keep those moving forward. But in terms of, I mean, honestly, I want to get back to the gym. I used to go to the gym every morning at 5 a.m. Yeah. And I, I've been sitting on my ass for six weeks, I will say. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Easy so, to do, though. Oh, yeah. Um, but no, for the most part, I mean, just keeping a lot of the things that have been positive out of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, like the dinners and the outdoor activities and, and doing stuff with my son and my wife. And, um, but for the most part, I, I honestly see it's going to be a long road out of this thing personally is what I see. Yeah. Um, I mean, and, and so you can have plans, but I, I don't see us returning to quote unquote normal mm-hmm. probably for a good year, year and a half. Yeah. I think you're and, right. So right. No, it's true. And uh, I think some things will return to some level of, now say normalcy, but I think you're de- definitely right. It will be a new normal and things will be different and it'll, it'll be interesting to see what we've learned from it. I had somebody say the other day that, uh, you know, you know, this, somebody said this is a once in a hundred year uh, uh, chance. And the guy in the, on the interview said, no, 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 this could happen again five years from now. It could be another virus from North Korea or another part of China or somewhere else. And the big question, oh, yeah. are we going to be prepared the next time around when you're finding out that 79, 80% of the people in the country live paycheck to paycheck and don't have $400 in their savings account for a medical emergency. So hopefully there'll be some good lessons taken away from it. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, my, my stepdad very well and, and his financial I mean, advice that he's always given us throughout the years. And, and, you know, I, I, I was lucky. I mean, I, I'm, I have a job, but prior to it, I was on, I was about a year ago, I was out of work for about oh, that's eight right. months. That's right. So, and luckily had money socked away and um, we did eat into a lot of it, but uh, still have some there and, and it's there for a rainy day. And, but yeah, you're right. Being prepared is, I mean, is what you have to do. You just have to, you know, you don't need that other pair of shoes or that other, exactly. maybe that coffee or whatever it is. And then it's interesting. Oh, go ahead. Oh, just because this is a situation where you can sit there and not be stressed out about it and be okay. I think it's such a good point. You mentioned Bob, your stepdad, and a lot of the financial things that he's passed on to you and Tyler and so forth and to me. And I think one of the things I've told Connor and Kyle, my two sons, Kyle's 36, Connor's 26, is always have some chunk of money set aside. You pick the number, 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, whatever the number you pick, but before you do anything else, get that in there and have it. And I think that's what Steve, the guy that mentioned it the other day about uh, this could happen again in five years now. Hopefully yeah. people have learned some lessons so they're not so... Uh, backed up and people that are, I mean, today is, I think it's May 1st. So they say that half the people may not be able to pay their rent. And so it hopefully will learn, teach people some lessons for when the next time it sounds like it will happen again. So, well, it could, it could be a lot sooner than five years. I mean, if you think about it, that's true. That's true. I mean, if you think about it, it could be three months from now, if they, depending on how much they were easy stay at home orders. Yeah. And then you never know, because as I understand it with the vaccines, I mean, these things are all different. It isn't one vaccine takes care of everything. So a new strain can be different. So, so Trev, last question is when you think about your life and how it sustains you, do you have like a quote or a saying or a philosophy or something that's kind of guided you and whether it's through normal times you mentioned i remember when you were out of work and that was kind of a challenging time and now this pandemic is there any sort of philosophy that you use to kind of lean on through tough times to to get you moving forward well i think there's one thing that always comes to mind whenever anybody's kind of bitching or moaning or complaining about something and even when i even think about doing it somebody somebody when i worked for nordstrom's told me this quote and um i can't remember his name right now oh bubba was his name worked in the Bellevue store with me. And he always said, you know what? Somebody's always got it worse. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so, and so, you know what? I can be complaining that, you know what? I missed this or didn't see this or didn't do that. 
but somebody's always got it worse. So it's like, no matter what, what happens is, you know what, accept what you have and, and somebody's in a worse shape than you are. So yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I hear that or I think about that a lot and it just kind of, it's like, okay, you know what, keep moving forward and just keep going. Yeah. That's a great so. point. I know when it first hit about six or seven weeks ago, I was pretty upset because in, no, in short order, I lost about uh, four or five talks I was doing in person for a fair amount of money. And I was bummed for the first few days, but then on the second or third or fourth day, it really hit me how many people are worse off than me. So that's such a great philosophy. And it's always to know that, uh, you know, there's going to be people in front of you and behind you, but to be, well, of course, that's why I talk about gratitude, to be so fortunate for what you have. So yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, listen, my yeah. friend, just some great tips as I thought. I didn't want to put a lot of pressure <laughs> on you, but I said, I want you guys to pay attention to what Trevor Olson has to say, because he's going to say some things worth listening to. So thank you so much for being a part of this. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. You bet.